All right, have you just started streaming and is the chat already complaining about the stream quality? Well, don't worry, in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the issues that new streamers encounter and how to fix them. Now, if your viewers are complaining about a laggy or choppy stream, check your encoding stats. If you see dropped frames, it means that your bitrate is set too high. Now you can lower this while you're live, but it's good before every stream to check your internet bandwidth to make sure you have enough bandwidth especially if you have a connection that can be a bit unstable. Now, if they're complaining about a pixelated stream, it means you don't have enough bitrate. So if you have the bandwidth for this, you can increase the bitrate to clear up the video resolution. But if you don't have this, you'll likely have to decrease your resolution and your frame rate. So when people first start streaming off their PCs, they may notice that their gameplay performance suffers, like the game may feel laggy or sluggish. And the reason for this is that a full HD 60 FPS encode takes a lot of resources from your PC, especially if you're using the X264 profile, which uses your CPU. So there's a couple solutions to this. So if you don't wanna sacrifice your gameplay experience, what you can do is lower the encoding resources needed. So one way to do this is to lower the resolution of your stream. So go to 1280 by 720 and 30 FPS. And you might also wanna check if you have a hardware encoder on your PC. So these are special chips on different components of your computer like your CPU or GPU. So Intel QuickSync that's on Intel CPUs, AMD VCE that's on the GPUs, and Nvidia NVENC that's on the GPUs. These can all be used to offload the encoding. Now out of all of these, I will say NVENC gives the best results, but make sure to check it out and it's usually on the latest Nvidia GPUs. Now if you really don't want to sacrifice the stream quality or the gameplay quality, you might want to consider purchasing an additional computer or encoding device to offload that onto. So I know a lot of media has told us to turn it up to 11, but the higher you set your gain on your microphone, basically the higher you raise the noise floor. So the microphone is going to be more sensitive to different things and you're going to hear different sounds picking up like keyboard clicks or the air conditioner in the back. So what you want to do is you want to set your microphone to an appropriate level. So minus 18 to minus 12 dB, you can use the Xbit audio mixer to see this level. You wanna set the microphone here, and I know it may sound a bit low, like especially if you do like a test recording, but you can use other tools to raise this level. So there's lots of audio DSP effects and VSTs, like compressors and limiters that can raise the overall level without bringing too much noise or raising the noise floor. Now, if this still isn't working, there's some noise removal tools that can help with this. So Xbit actually has built-in noise removal or if you have an NVIDIA GPU with RTX, you can use NVIDIA's noise removal, it's really good. And you can also use a noise gate. So what a noise gate does is basically you set a threshold and it needs to cross this threshold for the microphone to activate. So this is really good at eliminating really low noises like microphone clicks or just hum or rustle in the background. But I will say that once the microphone is open, these sounds will come through again. Now, finally, if you can't remove these noises and you're still getting a lot of noise, of course, you can try and change your environment, but also you might want to pick up a different kind of microphone. So dynamic microphones are really good for rejecting background noise and only focusing on your voice. But hopefully these tips help reduce the noise. So we all like having alerts for followers, subscribers, donations, whatever. Nothing sounds better than the sound of success. But after a while, you get kind of annoying to hear these sounds over and over again, especially over your gameplay. So this is an easy fix. You can set it so that only the viewers will hear these alerts. So what you do is on any web source that is playing out these alert sounds, you can actually set it from system sound to stream only. And this will redirect the audio so that only the stream or recording hears these sounds. All right, now you have a face cam so your audience can finally see you, but oh no, it's super grainy, super nasty looking. And the reason for that is you need lights. Lights will help you make your camera better no matter what kind of camera that you have. It can be very simple. It could be turning on a room light, but you probably actually want a dedicated light for this. So even if you do a DIY light bulb method, then you know you can put basically a shirt or a bed sheet, something white, something a bit transparent to soften the light, make it look nicer. Or you might want to pick up a dedicated light. There's tons of different lights available. I like the Aperture Amaran A100, or it's basically the cheaper version of the 120D, but it's the 100D. It's really cheap light and it gives you really quality, especially if you add a softbox modifier to it. But that's what I would go with. Add a light, it'll really improve your camera. All right, hopefully you enjoyed these tips. They should hopefully help you have a good stable stream so you can focus on your content. 
But if you have any questions or have any problems, let me know in the comments. We'd be glad to help you. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if this video was helpful and see you next time.